Let's take a look at the Dirichlet categorical model. Dirichlet, that's supposed to be an H. Dirichlet categorical. This is a great, a great little model to cut your teeth on if you're just starting to understand Bayesian inference because it's very useful and it's not too hard to understand. So in this type of setup, we have some random variables x1 to xn, and they're distributed according to a categorical distribution with parameter theta. So this just means that there's there's a, a, a PMF on a finite set so that the probability that xi equals equals not one equals j given this parameter theta is just theta j. So this j this this theta here, theta is a vector. So we, we may as well it's on arbitrary finite set, but we may as well assume that they take values in one to m. So xi here takes values in some finite set. Let's call it 1 to m. And these thetas here, are this is the probability that xi takes that particular value. So each of these is non-negative, each of them, and they sum to 1. Just a little pm. And these are, I should say, these are independent or conditionally independent given theta. I have to emphasize that because now we're going to put a distribution on theta. So theta, this is the parameter for this, for these guys, and this will put a Dirichlet, sometimes we just write Dir, Dirichlet with parameter alpha. And this means that the density for this guy, the, 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 the density at theta, I'll put given alpha here just to emphasize the dependence on alpha, is proportional to the product as I, well maybe which should I use, J? let's use J since we use J there, J from 1 to M, theta J to the alpha J minus 1 to the alpha j minus 1. Oh, and so, so this is the this is the important part here, but we also can't forget to include the indicator function that theta is that it satisfies these conditions here. So the sum of the thetas equals 1 and all of the thetas are all the entries are greater or equal to 0. J here, J from one to M, and this this just says that the support of this distribution is the probability simplex. So it's just this. I can draw it in three dimensions at least. It's this this sort of triangle that that this was theta one, theta two, theta three. This triangle here. All right. So this is our this is our setup, and let's compute. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the let's look at the the likelihood function for the data. So let's call this the data. This will be our data here. D equals oh no, that's not our data. Data is let's say we get some little x's and we're modeling these little x's by this by these random variables. So each of these little xi's takes values in 1 to m. And the probability of our data, this is the likelihood function, probability of the data given theta equals, well, it's the product, so this is the probability of all these guys, so this is just the product. Under our assumption that these are conditionally independent given theta, it's just the product of each of these xi's or maybe I'll put it this way. Probability that xi equals little xi given theta. And that if we plug in our definition here, that's the product of theta xi as i goes from 1 to n, which we could also write as 
the product over, well, I'll go ahead and write it this way. This is theta. We can write theta sub xi as the product as j goes from 1 to m, theta j to the indicator that xi equals j. And the nice thing about this is that we switch when we switch the products, we get product as j goes from 1 to m, and then the exponents sum. So we move this over, then then doesn't since theta j doesn't depend on i, then we sum the exponents and we get theta j to the sum of the exponents xi equals j. And let's call the exponent let's call it cj. So cj here cj is the sum, it's this sum as i goes from 1 to n and that is just equal to the number of i's such that xi equals j. So this is a count. It's it's counting how many times we we get we get j in our data. So these are this is a count. And we can make a little vector out of these counts, say c1 up to cm. Okay. So that was just a little a simple calculation, but here is the beautiful the beautiful fact. All right. So that's our likelihood function. Let's write that here. It's equal to this product, j from 1 to m, theta j to the cj. And our, our prior, this theta given alpha, maybe I'll just put, let me just put, let me just put, since we, we aren't putting a distribution on alpha or anything, let me just say, the pri write the prior this way, maybe a little clearer. And our prior, make a little space, is proportional to the product as j goes from 1 to m, theta j, to the alpha j minus 1. So this should look, of course, well, they're, they're very similar looking. And this is where the conjugacy, this, this, is, this is what conjugacy looks like in, in this, well, in this particular case, this is this is this is going to, to give us the conjugacy. The conjugacy, right, that is to say that this will show us that the Dirichlet distribution is a conjugate prior for the categorical distribution. Because when we multiply these two, let's do that. Let's multiply them. The the posterior, well let's say that, let's write it this way. The posterior distribution we know is proportional to the probability. It's prob proportional to the likelihood times the prior, because this we could use Bayes' rule, and then the denominator is just the probability of the data, and that doesn't depend on on theta. So this is proportional as a function of theta. And when we multiply these, the exponents just sum. So we just get the product as j goes from one to m theta j to the cj plus alpha j minus 1. And this is, of course, a proportional to a Dirichlet distribution. Well, I, so okay, I'm, I'm leaving off the indicator function. I, technically, I should put it, I should keep the indicator function around here. Let me just, I guess I put it here. I'll just put i for that, the indicator for the probability simplex, that theta is a probability simplex. And this, right, a Dirichlet distribution is proportional to this this looking kind of thing. And we've got something that looks just like that. So this is proportional to a Dirichlet over theta, the density of a Dirichlet with, with parameters c plus alpha, where c is this vector of, of counts. It's the count vector. And alpha is our prior is the vector of parameters for our prior, this thing here. And that says, so that says that the posterior 
is also a Dirichlet distribution. It's in the family of Dirichlet distributions. And that's what we needed to show that. So this implies Dirichlet is conjugate, conjugate prior for categorical. So that's, that's nice. So the beautiful thing he here is that we can get the posterior in this closed form. And we could write this also in the following way. Let's write this as Dirichlet. We had, I'm just going to rewrite this part here. This was a product of categorical distributions. Categorical, what is it, x, i, i goes from 1 to n, given theta, times Dirichlet over theta, given alpha. The Dirichlet absorbs the categoricals. So this equals Dirichlet over theta with parameter c plus alpha. So it's where c is just this count vector here. So the categoricals get absorbed into the Dirichlet, and this is the this is a nice little formula to remember. Now we can get the uh, so this gives us the posterior distribution. And we can also get the predictive distribution. That's another quantity, which is always nice to have in a when we're doing Bayesian inference. So let's add another random variable here, x. And this will be also conditionally independent of the others, given theta. And we'll think about this as being like a new point that we want to consider the distribution over. So this will be the probability of that 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 new x takes this value, little x, given the data. This is the predictive distribution. And this, we can integrate out theta. So this is the probability of x given theta and the data times the posterior, the probability of theta given the data, integrating with respect to theta. Then this is just integrating with respect to each of those coordinates. This becomes the probability of x given theta that's just our assumption that all the x's were conditionally independent. So x is conditionally independent of the data given theta. That's all that's saying. So this is, and what's the probability of x given theta? Well, that's just theta sub x, because it's a categorical distribution. And this here is the Dirichlet. This is our, our posterior distribution, right? It's this one here. It's this Dirichlet. So all this is, this you might recognize as an expectation. It's the expectation of theta sub x, or I guess I should put capital X, since it's the expectation with respect to that random variable. Or is it? No, no, it's not, not with respect to that. It's with respect to, um, no, that's right. It's, it's with respect to theta. Theta is the the random thing in this expectation, given the data. It's this conditional expectation. And the, so this is the mean, this is the mean of this posterior distribution. The mean of theta given the data. Well, it's the mean of theta sub x, rather. And this is so I'll, I, we can just write it. We have there's an we have an expression for the expected value of for a Dirichlet distribution. This is just equal to equal to c x plus alpha x divided by the sum of all those. So that's just n plus alpha zero because the sum of all the counts. This is summing over all the possible x's. The sum of all the counts is the total number of points, and alpha zero is, we will, so let's just define that to be the sum of all the alphas as x goes over its range. And that's it. We get this, this closed form expression for the posterior, dis, the predictive distribution.